All right, people, this is Angel B, and I'm going to record with my main man, Calvin Michaels. So he's going to give some commentary, and so will I. So I kind of sort of bootlegged his video, and um, I'm going to lay my commentary right along with him. So I hope you don't mind. Here we go. Hey, peace and greetings, YouTubers. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> I know you didn't see the video yet, but you know, I just wanted to say that and get that out the way. All right, moving on. So, VH1 Hip Hop Honors, I have to say that I really enjoyed this specific ceremony mainly because they took the time to appreciate the women who have contributed a lot to hip hop. And what I well, you know what? I do appreciate VH1 efforts. And trying to um, honor the queens of hip hop, but I'm gonna need them to try again. Like it, w it was just. Well, let's hear what Michael have to say, and then I'll say my thoughts afterwards. I really enjoyed the most about the four women that they honored is these women were not just women who were just rappers, but they contributed so much to not only hip hop but to pop culture, to entertainment. This to is so true. Many things. Whether it was Little Kim with the fashion yep. and just being so free spirited with the whole sexuality. That's and true. Like that, and kind of almost revamping and changing the imaging of what was the norm at the time for a lot of rappers and hip hop who were women. Female rap, um, yeah. And when it comes to Salt and Pepper, they were one of those first hip hop acts to really take on a social issue. And at the time, mm -hmm. you know, they had really taken I remember on that. With HIV and, and AIDS, especially back in the day. Yeah, they actually did. Um they actually revamped the song Let's Talk About uh, Sex into Let's Talk About AIDS. Um, yeah, they were like, let's talk about AIDS. AIDS, da 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 You know, so, yeah, I remember that. I remember when I was in elementary, when we did do like the sex well, I wasn't in elementary matter. when that I came out with it. But, video you know. special, and, and it came out back in like 90, 91, maybe 92. Whenever Let's Talk About Sex, I think that was like 1990, maybe 91. And I was in high school. They had a, a video special, and it was called "Let's Talk About AIDS." And I remember they used to show that at the schools. And one funny thing mm -hmm. about it is, Ashanti, the R&B singer, is actually in that video. When Didn't she goes, know that. It's so funny because it's like I'm this little kid watching this thing. No idea that some years down the line, Ashanti would end up being Ashanti. Full so, circle. Know, that's cool. So you know, yeah. so I was appreciated for that. Because I was wondering why she was out there. I'm like, okay, why is Ashanti here? And why is she trying to prove that she can sing? I mean, she she was hitting those notes. I mean, you know, let's let's be honest. I give her credit where credit is due. She was hitting those notes in the end. So kudos to you, Ashanti. Um, and the good thing about Ashanti is she is going to be in the industry for a minute, for a while, because she write her own songs. So people, if you are musicians, you got to write your own shit, Nick. All right? Queen Latifah, yes, she was a rapper, but she's just a straight entertainment mogul. You know, not only did she have television and film, but she also had her own label. She put out other people who had massive hits. And then when you also look at... Let's talk about Queen Latifah for a minute. Can we say mogul is like an understatement? Because this woman, she came from Jersey. You know what I'm saying? She's a Jersey girl, you know? And... um I, I, I just got to give her a lot of credit, man. I really envy her. And I actually met her one time. She probably wouldn't remember me, but um, I met her one time, and she was cool. Very, very down to earth. Like, really down to earth. I mean, I don't know if it was just that moment, but I really like her. I mean, she, she seems really cool, and she has definitely paved the way for a lot of hip-hop artists, a lot of the male hip-hop artists, and even the hip-hop artists, period, who have gone on to being on television. I mean, she set that wave. She was one of the first, if not the first. So, you know, you got to give her a lot of credit. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie, though. Her imaging, you know, because in the beginning, Homegirl was a queen, okay? She was, she was doing the whole African crown and all of that, and... You know, she did change her image, but, you know, I digress. I'm not going to even go there with that because that's my girl. The Elliot, who is just, she literally carried the 90s in the palm of her hand, especially between, like... 
Hello, Missy Elliott. I remember. Because I think I was like starting college or something. I don't remember. Maybe starting or finishing college. And um, Missy was the shinnick. She was definitely the shinnick. Like her music was all over. And Missy is also a writer. She, she came in as a producer, writer producer. So she got money. Um, all right, go ahead, Michael. Seven to freaking ninety nine those last three years. That was just the Timberland and Missy sound. Yeah, sure her was. Was on that sound. Yeah. And for the innovative Super aspects of the things she did when it came to music videos. So I really appreciated that those four were honored. If I yeah. had one complaint, it would have just been that I felt that Salt and Pepper got gypped a little bit in comparison to the other three honorees. And I only say that because Salt and Pepper was the first to come out out of all the four. Okay, yeah, you know what? You're right. Salt and Pepper definitely, absolutely should have been last. She should have been last. I mean, even if you guys were the producers of the show were targeting young a younger crowd, see, this is the problem I have. Like, we, we don't pass down the information. We don't pass down, like, we, we don't pass it down in a way where people should understand that you should absolutely honor these people because this is the root. These are the roots. This is the foundation, right? So you have to present it as such. But if you're putting them out there first, like, oh, let me get the old people out there first and, you know, keep it moving and bring it up to date. No, I don't think so. No, no. Save the best for last, which is the root. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I guess it could have worked both ways. Now I'm contradicting myself. But, you know, I I personally feel like they should have saved the best for last, which is, even though I love Queen Latifah, you and I, D-Y, you know, um, but Salt and Pepper, like, yeah, they should have been last and went out with a bang, and went out with, uh, you know, let's talk about AIDS, or something like that, you know what I mean? Um, but then again, I did like the UNITY. Okay, I'm jumping the gun. Go ahead, Michael. That were honored. And Salt and Pepper really, really, really opened some lanes for a lot of people, and a lot of individuals in the industry marketed themselves and molded their imaging after Salt and Pepper. As much as I love TLC, and as much as they're my favorite group in the world, you can honestly say that a lot of their imaging during the film was kind of modeled after what Salt and Pepper was doing at that time, even with the way that their music was. You know, sorry about that. You know, you had, especially first album was a lot of left eye, and then you had T Bob and Chili kind of singing the hooks and singing a few bridges here and there. But when you look at the formula of what Salt and Pepper was doing around the same time, it was always something where they had very similar sounds. Like TLC and Salt and Pepper might have had a lot of songs that could have been interchangeable between either group. And that's no diss to TLC. You know but it's what? Just that's true. That the lane that Salt and Pepper had opened for groups like TLC to become what right. they were. Um, but I, I, I really wish they would have given a little bit more Salt and Pepper. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, sorry to interrupt you, Michael. And, and also, um, it, it goes beyond the Salt and Pepper three, three women, you know, TLC three women. No, it, it goes a little bit beyond that. I mean, like you said, the sound, the look, the um, the um, yeah. I I I, I lost my thoughts, so I'm just gonna keep it moving because I'm not editing this. Hello. Another thing that I always say about Salt and Pepper is we always give little Kemp a lot of credit for you know being that one to really just open up as far as sexuality and the imaging. But people sleep on the fact that Salt. Uh, it's, it's Sandy's pack of what's Salt's name? Cheryl. Cheryl. Salt was that one in that group who back in the day? Okay, go ahead. She was the sex kid, especially during the very necessary era. Like I feel like even that opened the lane for Little Kim to be up front. Okay, so it 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 wasn't just Salt. It was Pepper as well. It was both of them because remember back in those days. They dress the same, so you can't say one put out more sexuality than the other. They they dress the same, so they both was rocking it. You know what I'm saying? People had either either people like the one with the blonde hair, the one with the black hair. You know what I'm saying? Salt or pepper. I mean, so it is what it is. Um, but you're right about that as far as the whole sexuality. I mean, because they actually were the ones where that weren't wearing like baggy clothes and stuff like that you know what i'm saying they made they they showed another side to being a female that happens to rap 
and that you don't have to necessarily look like a boy. Like they they were sexy. You know what I mean? They their clothes were sexy. The even their mannerism was was sexy. Even how they, you know, um, their performance was sexy. So it wasn't so that, so that's why they had girls liking them, wanting to be like them. You know, I remember my sister having posters up. I wasn't going all that far, you know, but she was into all of that. But I'm not going to lie, I did have me a hat, you know what I'm saying, an African hat. So, go ahead, Michael. I'm honest about how she wanted to portray herself. If you go back and you look at those throwback performances, if you listen to the lyrics, you see just the imaging, the outfits. They were sex symbols back in the day, especially salt. Um, so, they kind of sometimes don't get credit for that, but... You know, I think overall I really enjoyed the show because there were so many people who were involved. There were so many people who were there. And, and to be honest, in comparison to a lot of other award shows, sometimes they have these award shows and they do these tributes and there's nobody there. It'd be like five people. So they gotta All right, Michael, we're going to keep it going with that. Or in the show, they come out five and six times and do two different performances. But this one, there were so many people, I can't even name everybody who was there because that's how many people they had. I mean, they went into the churches and found all kind of entertainers we haven't seen in years. The minute they told me they had somebody out there from Sequence, I said, Sequence? You know, that's Angie Stone's old rap group before she went into Vertical Hole and then before she was solo. I'm like, Sequence? You know, they had the... Michael always knew his stuff. Songs. They were on Sugar Hill Records and they had the little dudes, 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 I should see him in the video. And that's the only I thing cute. I remember from the song. <laughs> there's some song, Wonder Bros. Group says some line like, something, 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 like Michael Jackson. I, my daddy had it on the vinyl, so he used to play it all the time. That's all I remember. But yeah. I was like, okay. I mean, they, they, they found a brat. Um, vinyl as in it's record, as in you put it on a record player. Some people probably don't even know what that is, but I digress. They, they found this jade. They found Babs for making the bed. Like, they were just All right, hold out. on, Michael. Now, Babs, that she's still new, okay? She's still making her mark. She was the one that was on P. Diddy making a band, okay? But, yes, I understand we haven't seen her or heard from her in a minute. Um, and I believe she had a kid, so, you know, she probably was doing the whole motherhood thing. I don't know, but, oh, no, actually, Babs have, um, she does the, um, the, the woman rappers in the ring. Something like the ring. Queen of the ring. So, she's been out there, you know, she's holding that show down. That has definitely grown. So, you know, you just haven't seen her on a mainstream level, but she's holding herself down with that whole queen of the ring um, with putting female hip-hop artists on. Like, they actually battle in freestyle, so... Hey, what, what you doing? You, you, you want to come do the tribute? Okay. Uh, I'm Shade. Saying, all right. I mean, they mm -hmm. were just pulling people out of nowhere. Nah, I mean, but yeah, that's true. They were. Oh, can we talk about Monica for a second? What? Her outfit was like, yeah, I'm like, okay, go Monica. And she was singing, but okay, at the end though, she did kind of go flat a little bit. So Monica, we're going to have to work on your stage presence. Um, but I understand because that probably was like really emotional, you know what I mean? So I get it, I get it, but you know, you still going to have to work on that because you look too good to be messing up and sounding flat and going off key, going off note. You know what I mean? So, but big ups to that outfit. That was dope. That whole white outfit was like, all right. I think that actually gives a really good show. I just saw her about a month ago at Howard Theater. She gives an excellent show. Um, He's talking know, about Tweet. Tweet. Yeah, Tweet did there. good. You can never turn down Although, wait a minute. Tweet, tweet, she actually messed up a little bit, too. I, you know, listen. People were kind of off their game tonight. I'm sorry. Can we talk about it for a second? Michael, I know you was talking, but I'm going to get back to you. People was off their game a little bit. You know, it was just like they needed one, maybe two more rehearsals. You know, it's like everybody missed their rehearsal time or something because it was like the band was off. Like, what the fuck were they doing? You know, it was like, yo, drummer, can, y can you speed it up a little bit? You the one that you're the timekeeper. All right. Speed that up, you know, keep time, keep it steady, all right? Horn section, y'all dragging along too, but I understand because the drummer is dragging along, so it's like you trying to stay with them, with, with the drummer, but it wasn't working. I'm sorry, the live band's supposed to sound like, ow, you know, and they were, they, they were just like, we need another two or three more rehearsals. That's how they sound, and, you know... 
As far as the choreography, you know, I don't know if you're going to talk about this, Michael, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. It's 2 o'clock. But the the um, choreography was on point, but you, but because of the director calling shots, it was just like, what the fuck? What the fuck, dude? Like, you, it was, the, the shots were just terrible. Who was calling these shots? I think I caught a, a, a glance at the director's name, and I want to say his name was Lewis. So I'm gonna let Michael talk and look this up because I was a little pissed off about that. I, in, in fact, I think Michael's gonna talk about it a little bit. I mean, and you know, the, the performances, I, I, they were hit and miss with me, and a lot of the performances that were misses with me, it had nothing to do with the actual performances, but it was just the way that they were edited and the production overall. I hated that. Okay, because- Michael, no, I'm gonna disagree with you. It did have something to do with the performers, okay? Because they all look motherfucking tired, okay? Excuse my language, y'all, because I get hyped right now. Um, so let me just calm down. Let me take a breath. Let me bring it down. I'm at a 10. Let me bring it down to a 2. Um, they all was tired. Like I said, they all seemed like they needed a, like they missed rehearsal or they needed at least one or two more rehearsal dates before they actually went on with the show, okay? Little Kim was tired. People was missing their lyrics. Because they're not used to playing in, with a live band. So, therefore, you definitely needed to show up to rehearsal and not play this whole diva game. Okay? Um, it was sloppy. And, you know, it's unfortunate because I know the choreographer did a phenomenal job with the dancers. She did a phenomenal job with the, with the choreography. But you, you wouldn't know that because, number one... The direction, right? The director who's calling the shots were just, it was just terrible. So you couldn't really follow their steps or follow what it is that they were doing. You know, it's like, I understand the above shot, right? Where you can see the whole sequence of it. But how many times are you going to do that shit? And then it's like, you just doing it just to do it. So it now it takes the creativity out of it. You know, you're being very sloppy. It was just sloppy. But go ahead, Michael. Say what you got to say. Doing the bird's eye angles, like looking down See? at the, um, the, I guess the visuals that were on the stage as far as the floor. Because it made you miss a lot of what was going on on the stage. You know, Kiki Palmer's part, I can think when she was doing salt and pepper, she was doing a whole lot of choreography and stuff, but you missed it all because the camera angles were wrong. See what I mean? Uh, some of that I had an issue with. Rich Holman Kwan, sir, you had one job. First of all, you only had to do a handful of bars, and I'm sure they asked you at least a week in advance to prepare for this. So, I don't understand how did you mess up the lyrics, so I'm sure Twitter is going to drag you for that. Get that together. See, this is what happens when you don't be doing your research, and then you try to do a tribute. Okay, when you are giving tributes to legends, you're supposed to have that stuff together. But I'm not going to let him off the hook, because I didn't particularly care for that specific performance at that whole little Kim part that she did. I'm like, Kim, what's going on? Um, yeah, um... Exactly. Kim was out of breath. It was just like, her, I, what the fuck was going on? I mean, was she like that emotional where it was just like, oh my God, this is really happening. This is happening. We're on. I told you motherfuckers, you should have got me here in time I, I, to, to rehearse. Like, what? I mean, Kim, we haven't seen you perform in a while, son, like on this major level. And it's like, you coming out the out of breath? Like, what the hell happened? It was like, you was just running and... You just ran on stage or something, but even if you just ran on stage, you know you're performing, and you knew this at least two months in advance, if not longer. So why not get in shape? You know what I'm saying? Jump around, do your raps while you're jumping, right? Don't you do that to 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 get yourself in shape for you know a performance like this? And yeah, Biggie was looking down on on the guy that was doing his part, like, dude, what the fuck are you doing for real? What are you doing? You you destroying my legacy right now. Okay, I'm getting carried away with destroying the legacy, but it was just like, yeah, that's a, that's the part. And it's like, you know, you want to be like, ow, ow, and you can't. He just destroyed it. He sounds just as bad as the band. Anyway, go ahead, Michael. What are you doing? I already bought these bad boy reunion tickets. What you okay, doing? Okay, hello. You know, Kim is still Kim. She'll do what she does, but she... And by the way, um, Michael, how are you going to buy some bad boy um, reunion tickets and don't even let me know? 
Now, I know we were supposed to go to the Janet Jackson concert, but Homegirl canceled, okay? So, I needed my money back. So, so, so now you can't invite me? But whatever, I digress. Let's get back to this video. Usually it's a little bit more hyper, but I think it's also because a lot of the songs I wish she would have performed, Tiana Taylor beats it on tonight. Like, Tiana Taylor... Okay, can we talk about Tiana Taylor? Taylor, go ahead. ...is the highlight from the show. Yes, right? she like, was. She came out, and I mean, she just... I was like, I was like, who is this? I had to do a double take, because, you know, I was doing work while I was watching the show, Okay. But then, you know, because let's be honest, y'all. Some of the parts was just like, it was just dragging. Like, what? Everybody's energy was just like, oh, what? So, it, it was like, um, okay, I can hear it, you know. I don't need to watch it. I don't need to see it. But then, when I heard her voice and she came out like, but, but, I was like, whoa. At first, I thought it was Remy. And then I did a double take. I was like, oh, snap. Tatiana. I was like, is, was she, is she a rapper or something? I mean, I never knew what she was. I know she have a, a, a father that's in the industry, but I don't, I know she's an actor. She did a couple of Tyler Perry movies. Um, but I, I never seen her rap or anything like that. It's my first time. So, you know, y'all let me know. Uh, so I, I kind of wish Kim herself would have done all about the Benjamins, her verse on that. But I guess because she does that at every, like, tribute, whenever they have one, that's kind of the big surprise to have Kim come out there like, let's just do something different. So I guess that's cool. But I really appreciate that they included so many people. And it was something where it was just a celebration, and it was just a whole bunch of love there. And when you just look at how many people were involved, that was the part I was stuck on. I was like, there were so many. Okay, yeah. It, it was a lot of people there, and it was a nice idea of a tribute but come on Michael it didn't really go off all that well it really didn't it was just like if they had a little bit more time it would be fine-tuned okay maybe I'm a perfectionist I don't know um I guess I'm not all that much of a perfectionist because this this audio is just going straight on to YouTube I'm not even trying to edit it but anyway um so and a perfectionist probably would try to edit it and make it as perfect perfect as possible but I digress but anyway um you making it sound like this was the bomb like oh my god this was the shit and it wasn't I'm sorry I, I'm I'm actually a little pissed off because finally they got a chance to honor you know queens of of hip-hop women in hip-hop right and it's like, they did a, a shitty-ass job. I'm sorry. It was just like, this was low budget. And when I and, and I don't mean low budget as far as, like, the presentation. Because they had the band. But the band wasn't tight enough. I'm sorry if I'm disrespecting the band. I don't mean to, but y'all wasn't. Like, y'all was dragging the entire time. Right? And then the, the, the dancers... Y'all was dragging the entire time, which I guess I understand because the band was dragging. You know, nobody had enough energy. It was like they just had, they had enough, just enough energy to make it through the performance. But it wasn't hype like, ow, like how Tatiana was. It wasn't like that throughout the entire performance. It really wasn't. People, they may not be A-list, they may not even be B-list, but at some point they were important to our history, our culture, our music, and so to see all of these people just come out of the woodworks to honor those four, it was great because, you know, a lot of the women in hip-hop were heavily ignored. Like, some of my favorite female rappers have never gone platinum, have never even went gold. Um, and then there's some who, who are forgotten. Like, I think one of my favorite rappers was MC Trouble, but, you know, she died from, a, from an epileptic seizure, and so she only really had, like, two or three singles that really popped off before she could really become who she was, and then she died. Um... You know, I, I think left eye kind of gets forgotten in that mix and people kind of sleep on her. But left eye had bars for days, especially on that Donald Jones track that she was on. Left eye could drag the mess out of somebody, literally. But um, there's just so many people in the who, who kind of fall under the radar. So I'm glad that like, people like Moni Love and the Brad and Yo-Yo and all of them got a little bit of shine tonight. That yeah, was that was nice. Um, that was nice that they were invited. 
that was nice that they were invited. You know, I mean, they had a lot of old school hip hop artists that I can't even name, but I recognize by face. Or I'm just giving them due respect because, you know, Queen Latifah and the whole group, who, um, Salt and Pepper and all of them brought these women out. So you got to give them credit. And when, I mean, it's not like the guys are going to do it. So, you know, I'm happy that somebody took the time to honor these women like they are not forgotten. They should be just as big, if not bigger, than the guys. Like, you know, like like our uh, uh, um, Lost Boys or, or, or Mace and all of them. You know what I mean? Like, they should be as big as, as, big as them because they did have hits at, at, at one point. You know? And, and I guess this was before hip-hop was mainstream. Go ahead, Michael. I think it was great that we're finally giving people, you know, their voices while they're still here. The right. thing that I took from this is, to me, this was symbolic of them all laying out the torch. Like, yeah. okay, we carried kind you this far. We're putting a torch here. Now it's up to the rest of you to come and take it. And so now the question is, who of the newer generations are coming to really take those torches and carry them on and carry that legacy? What I like to... Okay, so as far as carrying on the legacy, I mean, I believe I saw faces of new hip hop artists in the background, you know, or the new the new generation. Like some are some are a little established established like the um little little Mo. Um but I, I do see a few of the um up and coming um hip hop artists you know but I I also think that these women need to um you know put their hand out as well. You know what I mean? Like, they should have been on the show performing. Some of them did. So, you know what? I take that back. Some of them did perform. But more of the established mainstream, like Little Mo and Tatiana perform, right? Um, but I think the Sires, the Diamonds, they should have been up there too. I think if, if you're going to have Babs there, Babs, they should have said Babs, all right, select your best four lyricists that won your contest you know, in, 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 in the ring contest and have them, you know, we're going we gonna to find a place for them in the show. You know what I mean? And let them do a tribute or something like that and introduce themselves. That's, to me, that's passing the torch. To me, it was like these women here pretty much honored the women before them or the women that were in their time that will probably never get be acknowledged but as far as passing it down to the new people, yeah, they opened it up. But you got to do more than open it up. You got to extend your hand. And I know MC Light is, and Queen Latifah came on Sisters of Hip Hop show. And they did they collaborated and did a song together. Even though they destroyed you and IT. Why? Oh, they destroyed it. The beat was dope, though. The beat, I have to say, the beat was dope. But... I believe they can do more. I think they can do a lot more. And I also think old school hip hop, you know, Queen Latifah, Lil' Kim and all of them, Salt and Pepper, they need to do a song together now. They need to do a song together right now. And they need to bring some of the new school female rappers along to participate. We need to see more collaborations. Period. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I would even go as far as saying mix some of the old music with the new. Like, for an example, um, Luke DeVandross. He did all of his greatest hit songs over. He did, he, he did it over and made he kind of like did a remix of his classic songs. And I think they should do that, like kind of sort of what they did with you and ITY. I mean, granted, they kind of jacked it up. I, I didn't like the version, but... That's a good start, you know. And I know MC Light is also working, is a mentor of Little Mo. So I, I want to see more of that. I want to see more of that. Go ahead. What you say? That they honor is when you look at how diverse it is as far as what they offer to the industry. Yeah, that's you true. Know, Queen Latifah was very empowering, very Afrocentric, very pan Africanist in her music. And then all of a sudden, that shit went away. What happened, Queen? You know, What's going on? Time. Funny thing is, you really performed, but I ain't hating you. Which is very interesting, the first one, because um, she had two of them. Um, but, you know, just seeing what they offer, Missy Elliott becoming um, someone who makes the visual aspect very important. And Salt and Pepper was also very important as far as visuals as 
as well because they also had very good videos. Um, and it was just so entertaining to just see how far everything is coming. It made me feel old, y'all. And I was like, dang, I'm old. Michael, yeah. please. Because it was Stop. like all these people Stop. Out, I remember mm. all these different songs, especially when Queen Latifah was doing the house. Michael, song. you were just very, very young and you have a very good memory. So you talk about making you feel old. You was cause you you was a baby when you was listening to all of this and you just happened to remember. So stop, okay? Because if you old, that means I'm super old, all right? And ain't nobody got time for all of that. Oh, yeah, baby, I was like, yo, I was like five when that came out. I was like, well, no, I was probably like three and a half. But See? I remember my parents used to play that at the little house party that we sat in the Don't house. make me wait. And, um, Love. Back in the day, probably she had one of my favorite songs to come out. Give me the boys. It's a shame. Like that. It's so my shame. favorite song. I don't know if Jackson Yarn came to be going around because I really, really love that song. Right? You it was just cool to see like, how much they have accomplished because as you get older, sometimes time travels so fast you don't realize how much so many people have done until you sit back and reflect on it. Missy Elliott alone. For the songwriting and the production. Hello! The what? By herself. Yes! Right? Um, Let me stop. Queen Latifah honestly could have had a whole thing by herself. Yep. Well, Kim could have had something just by herself. I don't know, know about that, but... I mean, I know her... Um, but I get you. Maybe she's not one who had the big entertainment dynasty like somebody like a Queen Latifah. But when you talk about hip-hop, and you talk about her contribution to hip-hop, and fashion, and culture... And, and, and basically just being someone who could go with, you know, toe to toe with anybody. Like, Little Kim is respect. Little Kim was the one that was just like, yo, if, 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 if guys can talk about their hoo-hahs and all that other stuff, right? No, hoo-hahs are for girls, right? Anyway, let me just scratch all of that. If... Little Kim was bringing it raw. I remember specifically when she first came out because I was like, who is that? Like, what? Okay. It was very liberating, you know, as a woman, you know, saying the things that you want to say because the guys are saying this. So I was like, why can't we? And she said it. So there alone, she made her mark. Because of the fact that she not only was a lyricist, but she was dope at it, and right. nobody was seeing her at the time that she was out. There were other female rappers who were out at the same time, but there's just something about Little Kim that just people clung to it. I'm like, you cling to it now. When I was a little man, Little Kim was not about my mom's house. She said, no, you're not listening to her. No. You oh, you know who? You know what? They forgot to, well, I mean, I don't know if they did or not, but it would have been nice if they did like a special little thing for... Miss Melody, because she passed away, I think, either early this year or last year. I want to say it was last year. I don't know how she died. So, write in the com comics how she died, because I don't know what happened. But Miss Melody is the one that was on um, self-destruction, and she was married to um, KRS-One. And her part was, I'm Miss Melody, and I'm a born-again rapper. da 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 that part was dope. Trust and believe. Go look up. Go look up um, um, self-destruction, okay? And you, you're going to be like, oh, snap, that's dope. All right, so, but anyway, moving on. Go ahead, Michael. Say what you got to say. Like, okay, cool. So, but, like, Lil' Kim, you know, I, I have a deep, I guess I have an appreciation for her because Lil' Kim was just, she's one of the first that could be 100% transparent and say, right. okay, you don't have to shame me because a lot of people kind of saw that I heard the first time when she first came out because it's like, when you look at what the entertainers are doing. Yeah, they shamed her because she was she was rapping like a dude. I mean, just th that's it. She was rapping like a dude, but she looked like a female. So, of course, they like, yo, you should, like, slow your roll. You know, um, be easy. Talk like a lady. You know what I mean? And she was like, nah, I'm not having it. You know what I mean? This is this is what I want to say, and this is how I'm gonna say it. In the past, they were very covered up. They were very, you know, there was one. Yeah, everybody was wearing baggy, and they, and they had to look like they had to look like a boy. MC Light had to look like a boy. You know, had she had to blend in with the guys because I guess they wanted to be treated like the guys. But that shit didn't work. So it was just like, fuck it, let me be myself. I wanted, I want to be a girl. I want to be feminine. You know what I mean? But I want to sound raw. And I want to sound just as good as the guys. So, and she did it. That was Little Kim. And that's why she is where she is today. 
you know, and that is an icon. I'm lame and how you did it. So when Lil' Kim came out, a lot of people were looking at her and Foxy like, uh, what y'all, what y'all doing? Right. That, that's, not, that's not what we're going for. So, you know, there's a lot of people who don't really respect the legacy that Kim or somebody like Foxy has. But I feel like Hold all of the elements of what all of these female rappers uh, offered are important to hip-hop culture. And it's important that Absolutely. women are still respected in the industry. It's important that we don't set up the industry to the position where there's only room for one Right, and let me just go back to um, Foxy Brown. Some people were like, why she wasn't there, right? But let, let's be honest, Little Kim had a bigger platform. It's just, it's just that simple. Jay-Z wasn't really, pushing, um, wasn't really pushing Foxy Brown like that, at least not in my eyes, because you, you just thought about you thought about Lil' Kim. You know what I mean? And, you know, yeah, she had a couple of songs, but it was all about Kim. Female entertainer, and that's kind of what's been happening in recent times. But at the same time, the labels are different, and there's just not as many people who are out these days. But I love, what I love about the 90s and, and even the late 80s is there were so many who were out. So if you didn't care particularly for one person, there were a bunch of other people you could right. listen to. Yep. So, that's I think true. you have to get back to the essence of that. So, you know, if you didn't like Salt Pepper back in the day, it, doesn't, it didn't matter because J.J. Fan was out. You know? And you know what? You, you, you're you absolutely right about that. We got to get back to um, having more than one um, female rapper out there um, and an eclectic set of rappers. I mean, they are, but they are on the mainstream. Um, they are on the underground level. But whose fault is that? Like, seriously. You know what I mean? Who fault is that? I'm going to say it is the fault of the consumer, of the fans. Because if you like these people, you need to call up the radio stations. You need to shout them out on, on, on social media. You need to, more importantly, buy their albums, right, or their songs, go to their shows. Because that's what numbers, that's, that's what these record companies look at. And, and, and more specifically, dis distributors, they look at numbers, okay? It works that way in, in, in music, and it works the same in film. They look at the numbers. So if you, as a fan, liking that person's music, then why are they still stuck in underground? Now, I know some of you are like, well, you can't play certain music on the radio, blah, 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 blah. Trust and believe. We, the fans, are the ones that are over the airwaves. Okay? All we got to do is keep calling in and saying, I, and request these people. I want to hear such and such. 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 After a while, they're going to be like, okay, who is this such and such? Who, who is this? Who is Diamond? Who is Sia? Saya Sy Sy been on her grind for a minute. Okay? Diamond been on her grind for a minute. Diamond should be bigger than what she is. All right? Bab's been doing her thing for a minute, too. You know, she's, she's more of the curator now at this point. But, you know, these women, you know, looking at their age and, and, and their stage of the career versus the stage of the career of Queen Latifah at that age, it, it doesn't compare. Why? And I know time has changed, but if anything, with social media, it should be more of a, a chance of seeing um, eclectic type of artists out there doing their thing, right? I don't know. Am I wrong? I'm sure you guys are going to leave a comment. So let's keep it moving. Go ahead, Michael. If, if you were not somebody who cared for Queen Latifah, MC Light was right there. Um, right. And, and some of the other rappers who were right there, if you, if you didn't care for Salt and Pepper, um, if you consider TLC to be the hip hop group, you had them right there. And you had other groups, too. And you had uh, 357, Oakland. So you had all these different groups and everything. So I enjoyed that they did that. I loved the, the effort yeah. that was in the performances. My issue was just that some of the production was a little off. So it made what? the performances not come off as good as they could have. And sometimes when you're in smaller venues, the, the angling of the you almost want to make it look like the production is bigger than what it is. So sometimes when you're showing too much.
Okay, they made it look like it was bigger than what it is. Okay, so I don't know. Lincoln Center is a beautiful place. They were able to do some nice shots. It's just that whoever was directing were not calling the shots. Now, let, let me let me just say this, everybody. So you can, let me put this into context so you can see how it's all laid out, right? So it's a room and you have all of the cameras. Let's say you have about five or six, seven cameras are out there right so in this room you have all of these monitors set up of each of the cameras and the director are calling out the shots okay camera one do this camera two do that all right find an audience member uh, and, you know re reacting right quick so these people have to be on their p's and t p's p's and q's right and so does the director it's like she almost have to see it before it even happened right and um so she's, you know, that person is calling out the shots while you have this one monitor that, that is what you actually see on your television screen, right? So she's directing all of these different cameras. So at the same time, she, is, she or he is, I don't know what I'm saying, she, um, he is looking at all of these camera angles at the same time. But to me, I think... They should have had a laid out plan, you know, kind of like, you know, a short film in a way of how they was going to do things, you know, based on a rehearsal. This is how we're going to do it. Or not even based on a rehearsal, just to have an idea of his, with, with, all of this should have been developed in the pre-production. You're working with the, you're working with the choreographer. Um, and so... I don't I don't get it. You're working with the choreographer, you work you're working with the camera people. You don't even have to work with the camera people. It, you, you should have storyboarded it. Have some type of idea. You're working with Fatima, the choreographer, and saying, All right, Fatima, how your dances go. Let me see how your dances are gonna go. And based on that, or they just collaborate, they go back and forth, okay, well can you do a dance a little something dance right here, a little something dance right there, whatever the case, all right. Yeah, it'd be nice if you have a overshot of the, the whole sequence of the dance or you know actually you should pan through it through the front you know do some close-ups of all of you know what I mean it was just like some shots was like it looked like the people almost bumped into the camera or something or it was just too close it wasn't open enough it was just very shitty very sloppy you know what I mean but it's like I kind of I saw the potential but whoever directed they wasn't I don't think they were prepared. I just don't think they were prepared. And you can't blame it on the camera people because they only setting up the shot that you call out in that moment. You know what I mean? They don't have a storyboard because it really wouldn't work if they had the storyboard because, I don't know. Anyway, I think you guys understand what I'm saying. The house and showing certain angles. It just makes everything look so much more small scale. And like I said about, about Michael making up excuses. We had to just sit up there the whole time by himself. I was like, well, what's going on? They did, okay. Because little Kim seemed like she just wasn't up there the whole time. She was backstage doing her eight different wardrobe changes and everything. But I, I really enjoyed everything. I love the message. Was that Sherry, Michael? I love that they're to talk about what's going on with the police. And, and the thing about it is even if they are not as informed about certain issues and everything, they weren't going to open their mouths to say anything foolish. They were only going to come out with positivity and work towards solutions. So I appreciate that. I appreciate the call to action. I appreciate the, the empowering. Thanks to Queen. Saying, okay, well, you know, we get it. This is how you can do it, and you can be great, too. And so these are legends that you're watching. Salt and Pepper is legendary. I mean, for them to have started out working at J.C. Penney and somehow become I'm done with you. Legends. And Shay. Sandy Pepper, if you ever read her book, it's a really good book talking about just her relationships and her experience. That's why I was kind of side eyeing what was going on with Trekkers on stage. Because if you've read that book, you ain't doing too well back in the day. Trucks were not by nature. And I also laughed a little bit when they had Faith Evans honor a little camera. I kept looking like, I don't think this Well, they have a beautiful like, daughter together. You know, me and Faith, we just, I don't feel like, you know what? Okay. All right. All right, Kim. <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, wait. Hold up. Faith and, Faith and little Kim. That's right. I totally forgot about that. That was funny. I don't care what anybody say. That shit was funny. Mary J. Blige probably was like, I'm not getting involved in that shit. Y'all gonna have to do that on your own. I'll make the videotape. 
and y'all can y'all can do that on your own. Um, that shit was funny to me. Um, I don't even know what to say, but hey, they did it. Um, I guess P Diddy was like, "Look, we gonna get some money. So if y'all gonna go on tour with me, y'all need to put your differences to the side, so we can do what we gotta do." And so that's what adults do, right? That's what adults do. They put their differences to the side. These are grown ass women. They're not in their teens anymore. You know what I mean? They're not in their early twenties. So. You know, you put your differences to the side, make that money, and keep it moving. So, but it was funny. They, you know, I don't... I, hey, you got to give Faith credit for, you know, laughing at herself. I'm dying, y'all. You know, um, but no, I, I really enjoyed this. Um, let me know what you think. Sorry, I didn't really go into depth about all the... Don't worry about it. Everything. It was like, it was just so many things going on. I, I was like, I was just honestly watching it. I didn't even write my notes like I normally do. One thing that Michael forgot to mention is that um, there was a point where all of the women in hip hop, you know, from old school came out and they were standing on top of these glass uh, bricks in a way, you know, they, but they were like see-through boxes, these glass boxes, right, where you can see through it. And it was just like Queen Latifah went down and introduced every last one of them. But it wasn't like... She was naming them. She was. She had like a little story for each one of them. You know what I mean. So it was really nice. It, it, it was like she n know who these people are. You know what I mean. She was definitely honoring who the, and paying homage to who these people were back in the days. And I really appreciate that. The camera work was shit tea. Oh my god. I just want to bring the director's neck. Okay, no, I don't because I'm not a violent person. I'm a lover, not a fighter. But I'm just saying it was frustrating watching it because it was just like this was a beautiful moment. It was a beautiful moment. Whoever wrote the show, they wrote, they did a good job writing, but they didn't do a good job executing. It's almost as if you have a great script, excellent equipment, but you don't even know how to use the equipment, so it comes out fucked up. And that's, to me, that's what happened. And I don't know why they didn't use Beyonce band. Oh, I know, because they're on tour. So I'm like, y'all need to stop hiring men and hire women so we can show you how to do shit right. You know, because the band, I'm, I got to find out who they I know that wasn't Rachel and the crew. They were hot mess. But let me see, what else did Michael miss? Um, at the end, everybody came on. And, and song U N I T Y that was really nice, um, so that was that was cool. They ended with U N I T Y, um, which is appropriate because of you know the state of America right now with motherfucking cops killing black folks. You know what I mean? Which is basically straight up white supremacy. You know, in action. All right, but we can break that. We can break that, y'all. We can. We can We can break that by, you know, respecting ourselves. If we respect ourselves and do for ourselves, right, then, you know, people wouldn't treat us like that. Now, I'm not saying that these men deserve that. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying if we take the time to know our history and know who we are, it wouldn't even escalate to this point at all. So we got some work to do. We got to start loving ourselves, supporting each other, right? I mean, you know, as far as the black dollar, that's in our hands for a couple of hours versus other races, a couple of days. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got to check ourselves, you know? We got we, we have to check ourselves. Um, so we, we, we have to strategize and, and be proactive, Right? It's not about wasting your energy on hating someone. That is so... We don't have time for that, okay? And we don't have time to focus on, you know, this person's sexuality or that person's religion. Because all you're doing is deflating the root, right? You're just going away from the root of the problem. All right? So let's just focus on our... Um, what we have in common, which is we all black, and, and we all need to get it together, right? 
you know, like I was telling Michael, we're the only ones that call ourselves people of color. You never hear an Asian person say, yeah, I'm a person of color. You, you barely hear a, 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 a white Latino person saying they're a person of color. Okay? And I never heard an Indian person say they're a person of color. So we need to just say who we are and be proud of being black and create our communities like everyone else. I mean, you have a, a Italian community, Asian community. Nobody say shit about that. Why can't we have ours? Right? Now, I'm not, I'm say, I'm not saying we need to segregate anything like that. But we do need to have a strong resource for us. So that's, that's just something to think about. Um, that's something to think about. And it's all good with boycotting. But what, what are the short-term strategies, right, plan of action? What, and what are the long-term plan of action? To me, the long-term plan of actions are creating banks, Right? owning land so we can grow our own food, right? Produce our own food and eventually having our own supermarkets like the Latinos do, right? They over the associates and key foods, all right? Can we keep it real? Asians are over the seafood, right? Italians, they got their shit happening too, right? What about us? So that's, that's the long-term plan because that's going to take some time. It's not going to be easy for us to get. It's not. Because we are in a society that is based upon white supremacy. So when, when that happens, um, they're not trying to, you know, make it easy for you. Because by them having a white... Supremi- by this being a white su- um, su- supremacy society, it's benefiting them. So, it's, so they have to keep us going at each other with our sexuality and, and religion, you know, social media and all this shit that doesn't matter whatsoever, right? Because it's a part of their prop- propaganda, right? So we have to we have to stay focused. And um, work on a strategy and, and put that strategy into a plan of action and execute it. Do, do a short one. What, what we can do right now is study the Constitution. Like seriously, because our rights have been violated several times. Right? And we need to understand how this voting thing works. Right, because our vote doesn't count when it comes to the president presidency, but it does count when it comes to voting locally. Who are your local reps? Like you, you should know this. All right, so I'm going off a little bit because we, we, you know, we're supposed to be honoring the queens of hip hop, but you know that's just something to think about. It's time to you know recondition our minds, people, and wake up. Because it's, it's not going to get easier, you know. And what we're going through right now, it ain't shit to compare to what, you know, the Jim Crow era. All right? This, this, is, this is easy compared to that. Right? So start educating your kids. Right? Listening to your grandmother, great, great, great grandmothers in some cases. Because we got some grandmothers that's like 40. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, your great, great, great grandmother, you know, that's, I'm talking about the grandmothers that's in their 70s and 80s. Let's listen to those stories. Listen to what they have to say, right? Because they're going to tell you the true history. All right. Anyway, I'm digressing. Um, Michael, he want to say something. So um, please be sure to like and subscribe. I love all of y'all. Um, thanks for watching. This is something new. And, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. Michael, what do you have to say? I enjoyed the performances. I mean, they even found Ashanti, she performed, like, they, I'm not mad at them at all. This was very well put together. I love that they put energy and effort agree with into that. all of them. Um, and that's my two cents. So I'm out. Subscribe. Let me know what you think. All right. Peace out, everybody.